with Bob's Leather Works in Raleigh, North Carolina. I've got a brand new rig here. This is a Cowboy Fast Traction CFDA um, rawhide lined rig for the holster. And what I want to talk about today partly is this rig, but also I want to talk about the difference between buying uh, gun leather from stock houses. Um, I hesitate to mention some brands, but uh, Kirkpatrick comes to mind, uh, Safari Land, um, even Mernicle, a uh, uh, couple of others that make, uh, I don't know if I'm saying it correctly, Shenanko, Shenanko, uh, Red Dog holsters. Um, all of these uh, stock houses are by implied by the name are selling you once you've selected you know a model name they're selling you a stock item that is ready to go uh, they may have a lot of orders it may take some time to catch up to you but principally their merchandise is already made and there's nothing wrong with that um, it, it's kind of like Henry Ford you know you're buying a Model T and buying a Model A and it's just a matter of when you're going to get it. So the difference between a stock house and custom, which is what I do, custom made uh, gun belts, is that every single one of, of what I make is made to the customer's order. And this is an example of that. Um, this gentleman has a new model of a Caro 45, 4 and 5 ace that he's going to use for cowboy fast action. So, he wanted it made in a certain way for his size, which it, which it is. This is a 44 and a half. Um, he liked the fact that he had a choice between brass and nickel hardware, so he got nickel, and there it is. Okay. Custom also means that you're going to get your initials uh, put into, when you get it for me, put into the belt connector and behind the holster. So let's put this big heavy guy over, and there it is, R18, and that's my stamp. There are no rivets of any kind that are holding things in that can't be removed uh, on the holsters that I make. Mexican holsters have rivets in them. This is a snap, and this will allow you to take your uh, holster apart off of here, uh, which is important which is necessary because there is a slide ledge in here holding this holster onto the belt. And you've seen, if you've looked at other videos, you've seen the slide ledge. And here is the one in this particular rig right here. Bullet loops. Um, for your size, if you want bullet loops um, filled up to the back of the belt, which was the case here, this gentleman's getting 26 45 caliber bullet loops starting out right behind the gun maybe they're right there going over over to the other side again for his size and stopping right there comfortably he's got room for um, uh, a knife sheath if he wanted it uh, maybe even a, a, a front uh, sitting cross jaw holster in the future if he ever wants to get it It'll cover up his initials, but the initials are, are for a couple of reasons. One, you know, it, it's definitely for vanity. It says that it's your rig. But also, if you ever get it stolen from you, and the cops get it back, you can say, you know, in your police report, this rig had my initials on it, and if they find it, they're going to know it's yours. They're not just anybody's gun belt. It's your gun belt. Suede lining. Suede lining, you know, is optional for me, but you're not going to be able to get it most often, most likely from a stock house. I mean, I'm not the only custom gun belt maker, you know, out there, but I'm one of them. So if you want suede, yes. There were no suede line holster rigs, gun belt rigs that I've ever seen in a Hollywood, um, you know, um, TV show or Western. Um, but the suede acts as a good grip and 
uh, it's okay to have it on here if you're never going to get wet, caught in the rain. Um, principally, that would be the reason why. Um, if you are someone who's on horses all the time and you, you do get caught in the rain and you don't get your slicker on fast enough and this suede gets wet over a period of time, it's going to get you know kind of mushy, kind of funky. Um, so that's, that's one of the things that you will or will not get from a custom gun belt maker, but it's going to be hard to get, if not impossible to get, from a stock house. So that is, that is, those are the highlights of it all. And color, let, another thing, color is something that um, is going to be more or less standard, standardized uh, coming from a stock house. When I make uh, a gun belt uh, and a gentleman says medium brown, well, I go from there, but I am mixing oil dyes. This is oil dye which has an alcohol, um, more or less delivery agent in it is I guess the best way to say it. So it's alcohol and chemicals that are oil based, <coughs> excuse me, for color. And then when it dries, I run it out with water. I get the excess um, dye because most parts are immersed in dye. I get the excess dye out of the grain. And then when that dries, I rub it out again making sure that, that it isn't bleeding too much dye and then when it dries again I go over it with a Kiwi Neutral Wax Shoe Polish and I've taken to melting it in now with a hair dryer giving you some of my tricks of the trade but on a sewn piece if I go over it with um, the wax shoe polish afterwards then it gets into the punch outs from the sewing machine and all I do is I melt it in with the hair dryer and then I rub it out again so you're getting something you a, a benefit you don't see and you will not get from a stock house is waterproofing down in the threads now their finishes I, I, I have to take that back to some degree their finishes are the last thing they do and most often they are using something like saddle lac which is a spray and a spray is spray lacquer. They call it saddle lac in the, in the leather trade, but it's lacquer, okay? And lacquer is sprayed on solid brass buckles uh, after they're, they're done, you know, plating them so that the, uh, the brass doesn't tarnish. But this is nickel plating over brass. That's what these buckles are. Okay. So, that finish that I put on, the Kiwi Neutral Wax Shoe Polish, gives you a measure of waterproofing and you can renew it very easily. It's not an exotic product. You can find them in supermarkets everywhere. The brown, the black, the cordovan, and the neutral. So, sunlight, uh, gunpowder residue in the air, um, exposure to the air, and all of that is going to change the color of your rig over time. You're not going to see it uh, until someone walks up to you and say, that didn't, wasn't that a different color? You know, I haven't seen you in six months, but isn't that a different color than it was um, when you first got it? And that happened to me. I ran into a man at a, at a shoot that I hadn't seen for a year, and I made his gun belt, and I looked at it and I said, it looks like I made that, but the color's kind of odd. And it had turned kind of a, a darker cinnamon red, and it was just just beautiful and uh, he loved it and he didn't even know that it changed so here is your custom made cowboy Vestra action gun belt with it attached on the holster not on the back flap but on the holster um, wax bullet deflector and this entire holster is lined with a, uh, about a 16 inch thick piece of rawhide that runs all throughout it and it has a nice solid open throat latigo hammer thong and that's my Uberti Peacemaker clone 4 and 5 eighths and this holster is pretty much zero retention it's brand new there's a little bit of, of gentle grab down by the ejection rod tab but that's going to go away real fast when he starts to wear it. Okay.
matter of fact, I'm doing it right now. Okay. So there it goes. Come on, out she goes. The main thing is that you can cock it in the holster. That's what she's doing right now. That was the buckle hitting the wood below me. That's what she's doing. Okay. And then out it comes. No, no resistance whatsoever. And when the gun is hot, first time it's shot and reholstered and hot, it'll open it up just that much more. Got came outside and it's cool right now. It's about 65 degrees. And as it turned out, all the colors that are in this holster match the the grip on this Uberti. This is a really beautiful gun, and I had her slicked up. She has a new hammer spring in the butt, and she cocks up real fast. So that's it from Raleigh, North Carolina. Thanks for watching and listening. And if you have any questions, you want to order a rig, all the information to do that. It is on the end titles. I'm turning it around so you can get a better look at the end of this of how she looks. My standard uh, cowboy fast track, not cowboy fast track action rig, well, yes, but my gunslinger model, which is what this is, if you look on my website, um, had uh, a note that said uh, six came standard, and they do, but if you're wanting more bullet loops, I'm not charging for them anymore. It's no great extra cost for me to punch out, you know, a number of holes and put in bullet loops. So I don't charge the dollar a, a piece more for them anymore. And one of these days, as soon as I can do it, I need to get to my website and change, you know, some factual things and take the prices off of them because prices change as time goes by for the cost of leather and supplies. So, thanks for watching. Have a great day. My remote uh, battery is dead, so I got to reach over here to shut the camera off, which is what you're going to see me do uh, partially. If I can catch it in editing, I'll change it out. Or maybe I'll just walk out of the shot. That's probably the best way to do it. So, thanks for watching. Have a great day, and hope to hear from you soon. Bye bye.